There's a statistically high chance that if you live in North America, the first minivan that you ever bought, drove, or spilled your Cheerios in was a Chrysler or Dodge product. Today, Dodge has vacated the marketplace and Chrysler has axed its long-running town and country nameplate. But this new model, the Chrysler Pacifica, looks to continue what has become a grand tradition of family-sized mobility. How does it look? Our own editor-in-chief is on the record as calling the Pacifica beautiful, and it's easy to see why. This van has a very modern profile, thanks in large part to the expansive side of curving glass and the sheet metal that makes elegant work of the long body side. The fact that this example is rolling on optional 20-inch wheels doesn't hurt the curb appeal either. How's the storage? Beep, beep. Now with two rows of stow and go seats, you're actually gonna to struggle to find stuff that won't fit back here. And certainly all of our luggage from away is a cinch to fit. With that said, the 140.5 maximum cubic feet offered is slightly smaller than what you get from Honda or Kia, and it's a lot smaller than what you get from the Toyota Sienna. Minivans are the champions of interior storage, and the Pacifica is no exception. From behind the steering wheel alone, there's a center storage bin, a space on the floor for a bag or a purse, a large pocket for keys or a phone, even a dedicated tray for your umbrella. Continue to the back and you'll find more of the same, along with a wealth of cup holders at every station. Is it roomy? The truth is that the Pacifica isn't a leader in any single interior measurement that I found, but that doesn't mean it isn't commodious for most people in all three rows. I felt great as a tall guy in the driver's seat and in the second row captain's chairs. The way back might be slightly cramped for someone like me, but your kids shouldn't have reason to want more legroom. How does the interior feel? Wow, the interior of this top-of-the-line limited trim is actually kind of decadent for a minivan. I'm not used to seeing this much leather in this dramatic a brown and black colorway in anything in this segment. And I've got to say, too, that the instrument cluster with the shape and tone of this blue lighting, it looks really high-end. Is it well-equipped? The Pacifica Limited has a list of standard and optional equipment longer than that itemized bill you get from your little scamps daycare center. But allow me to hit the high points. The sliding doors and the tailgate are powered, as is the folding action on the third row seat. Oh, there's a vacuum back there as well. You can open just about anything remotely with the key fob or start the engine. There are cameras everywhere to make parking or negotiating tight spaces simpler and safer. And the safety features extend to all kinds of driving, with adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, and braking assist as part of the Advanced Safety Tech Group Options Pack. But your family is most likely to appreciate the $2,795 you spend on the Uconnect Theater option. That outlay of cash buys a 20-speaker Harman Kardon stereo and two impressive 10.1-inch seatback touchscreens in the second row. Back there, you can watch Blu-rays or any digital media on a USB drive or anything that connects up via HDMI. What's more, the system comes with baked-in apps and games to help while away those long road trips. How's the infotainment system? It's slightly less exciting than the screens in the back, but Uconnect is still very good. The system is easy to use, supports your Apple and Android smartphones, and has a button to let me lower those pesky rear headrests at a touch. Is it a good daily driver? So I think there are really three elements that make the Pacifica an excellent daily driver. 
The first is the overall visibility. The ride height here is good. The forward visibility is excellent. And I've got a lot of glass everywhere around me. Not to mention big mirrors and sort of a standard rear view mirror and lots of cameras that are helping if I'm doing low speed stuff in parking lots, parking garages and things like that. Overall for a big, long, pretty wide vehicle, it's really easy to maneuver. So the second element is the ride quality is really good, smooth and controlled. Even on bad roads, it soaks up the worst of it without really translating that information to the driver. I'd say it's only in extreme situations where the overall softness of the suspension can make the thing feel a little wobbly. I think the third element is actually the combination of this 3.6 liter V6 engine and the nine speed automatic transmission. And there's plenty of power, both for around town on the highway. It's got 387 horsepower, 362 pound feet of torque. It works really well with this nine speed transmission to get you in the right gear all of the time, whether you're in the city or on the highway. Is it fun to drive? Honestly, the most fun that you're gonna have in this minivan is accelerating hard and hoping not to wake the baby up from her nap. The steering is really kind of strange. It's, it's heavily weighted, but it doesn't feel particularly accurate. And it has a strong desire to want to return to center. So it just, the overall effect is that I don't really get a strong sense of what's happening with the tires when I'm going around a corner. Of course, if you start to worry too much about how fun a minivan is to drive, you're clearly asking the wrong questions. Sit back, turn the stereo up, and just enjoy the ride. How's the fuel economy? Let me remind you that if fuel economy is your go-to car question, Chrysler makes a Pacifica hybrid that sips fuel slower than any other minivan. But this one isn't bad either. The EPA rates the Pacifica at 18 miles per gallon in the city, 28 on the highway, and 22 combined. How much is it? At the bottom of the range, the Pacifica can come in under $30,000. But this limited luxury bus is far from that base vehicle. The loaded out trim starts at $42,495, and the van you see before you is $49,450. Who needs a college fund, right? What are the negatives? The Pacifica is a little smaller on the inside than most of its competition, and it doesn't have a trump card in any one factor that van buyers are probably looking for, like fuel economy, price, or storage. What's more, steeper depreciation is likely to make the Pacifica more expensive to own over time than its arch rival, the Honda Odyssey. Who should buy it? This is a downright spectacular minivan to drive, ride in, and live with day to day. The flexible interior space, wealth of technology and options set, and handsome looks should put it on everybody's must test list if they're in the market to buy a minivan. Hey guys, thanks for watching yet another Why Buy. We really appreciate it. If you have questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. We'd love for you to subscribe to our channel and to look for us on Facebook, on Twitter, and always on MotorOne.com.